Pass the Mohegan. Got a cigarette. Likewise, the last. Thanks. Light it for you, old boy. Duke, if you don't like our company, you know what you can do. Why, Madigan, I wouldn't think of such a thing. Palatial accommodation, intellectual companionship, and something cooking on the stove. Say, I'll roll you for some of that slump. Against what? The sticker. Go ahead. Oh, boy. Good old patriot. Here we go. Come on. Sarah! You got those things trained. Well, if they were, I wouldn't be here. Get a load of this. By this time next year, it is expected that every able-bodied man between the ages of 21 and 45 will be either in the armed service or working in a defense plant. How do you like that? Bet the next thing you know, they'll be forcing us to go to work. Why don't you get wise to yourself, Madigan? The Japs attacked Pearl Harbor last week. We're at war. And every able-bodied man has a job to do. So what? A bunch of politicians ain't gonna wave no flag in my face and put me in no uniform. I don't know this country a thing. Listen, Madigan. I don't like the way you talk. Ain't that too bad. You think this is a swell country, don't you? I think it's a great country. Then get out and see more of it! I guess you're out all right. I don't mean you're all right. I just guess you're out. Guess I'll have to fix it. Couple of hobos running down our country. It's a fine how do you do. Mate, you ain't told me your name. Smith. Plain Jim Smith. No kidding. Same as mine? I used to have a cousin by the name of Jim Smith. Born in a little jerkwater town down in Arkansas. Buckeye, I think it was. Yep, Buckeye it was. Because my uncle used to always call him Buck. You know, Buck left home when he was a kid. It ain't been heard of since. You couldn't be him, could you? When was he born? April the 1st, 1909. I'll always remember that because my mom used to call him my April Fool's cousin. That uh, couldn't be me. I'm no April Fool, baby. And besides, I'm one of the Tennessee Smiths. How do you do, Tennessee Smith? Glad to know you. Same to you, Fixin. I bet you were kidding each other somewhere along the line. Where you heading? Los Angeles. I'm going right through there on the way home to enlist. Army? No. My whole family's Navy. Twenty years for me. Why, I have to wash my blood once a week or else I salt up like a mackerel. Joining up again, then. Huh, wait till I walk into the Commander Lane. He's my skipper on the old Sinclair. Sinclair, wasn't she? Yeah, how'd you know? You give me a ship's clock when we bust it up. He's commander of the section base at San Pedro now. A mighty tough Joe to shave, but you'd never want to meet a greater little guy. What are you going to do when you hit L.A.? Oh, I'll probably tie up for the shipyard. That's your business? No, not exactly. Until a couple of months ago, I was knocking around the South Pacific. And when I hit the States, I joined up with a salvage outfit as a deep sea dive. Well, I'll be doggone. You got all the fixings for a gunner's mate. Me? The Navy? Sure, you bet. Gunner's mate? Care in charge of ordnance? Pilot equipment? Tennessee, you're a cinch. Maybe you got an idea. Yeah, I think maybe you have, Fixin. Hey, stop the next town, will you? I want to send a telegram. Sure, I will. Thank 
it all, pal. Really makes us cousins. Still say you should have dropped me in town. What's the matter? We got the measles or something? You're staying with us. Hey, Mom, it's me, Icky. Icky? Icky Bod. Hey, Mom, are you home? Well, après vous, as we say in French. <laughs> Corned beef and cabbage. Ooh. Ah, well, that smells good, doesn't it? And some of Mom's cookies. Think you're keeping one of them. Dear Mary, Mary's my niece. I've gone out to Spencer's Market. If you get home first, put the potatoes on the boil. And your telephone. We'll have his 40 hours and be here next week. 40 hours means he'll be on liberty. Elliot's are both. Not Mom, Mary's. Well, you see her. I can't beat anybody in these duds. I told you I'd fix it, didn't I? Yeah, but... Well, you asked for it, huh? Oh, let it out, will you? Hey, drop me. Come on, let me down, will you? Come on, cut out the... Sure, so Father notice. Heave to and throw out your anchor. Now, wait a minute. I'm not going to take your bedroom away from you. Who says it's my room? It's my brother Jack's. He's in Honolulu, ship's fitter, first class. His rig will just about fit you. So get yourself ship shape while I drive over to Spencer's and pick up Mom. Some more stuff in here in case you need them. Help yourself. Hey, fix it. Yeah. A lot of words I could say, but if I put them all together, they'd, they'd spell thanks. Ha! Ah, shucks. Why, well, I was just taking off my coat. Those are my father's clothes. Mary Smith. You know, that used to sound like just an ordinary name to me. But now it sounds beautiful. Mary Smith. I like it. What are you doing here? Incidentally, that picture doesn't flatter you. Who are you? Oh, didn't I tell you? I, I'm Jim Smith, one of the Tennessee Smiths. Uh, you see, Fix-It told me that I... Fix-It? Yeah. Then you want to fix it, friend. That I am. I'm sorry. <laughs> Is she, did she, are you? Who <laughs> shot? No, she fainted. She, uh, she thought I was a burger. Uh, oh. Can you imagine that? Oh, uh, hey, Mom, this is Tennessee Smith I was telling you about. Tennessee, this is Mom. Ain't she cute? How do you do? I've heard well, that. Uh, How do you do? We got things to do. Let's get going. Oh, yeah. Yes. Huh? Don't you think you'd better leave Mary here, Mr. Smith? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Ah! Well, The ship offers you the same opportunities for promotion, whether you've graduated from a trade school or not. 
But to be promoted, you must work and study. And who? Fix it, Smith. Freshwater Hines. How have you been? Great. Glad to see you. Glad to see you. Oh, boy, I bet we get that off you in a hurry. Yeah. A couple of looks at that face of yours that'll follow. Get him. Skipper aboard. Open your ears and feast your eyes. Base inspection parade. See you later. Okay, fix it. for the mine disposal unit, sir. Yes, everybody's yelling for old-timers. These new boys will be old-timers before we're through with them. Look who's here, sir. Pardon me, Gilpin. Well, I was wondering when you'd appear on deck, Fixin. Yes, sir. Have you got a nice new mine sweeper for me? I think it can be arranged. Did you bring your service record? Right here, sir. Ship safe. Ichabod Ferdinand Smith. Chief Gunner's mate. Yeah, Mr. Harley will take care of you. As soon as you've had your shots, you're in. Do I have to go through all that torture again, sir? Same medical rules as when you left, fix it. But I've been through it four times, sir. Oh, I, I almost forgot this is a particular friend of mine, Mr. Tennessee, uh, uh, I mean Jim Smith. I want you to meet the commander. Mr. Smith? How do you do, sir? He's an expert salvage man and deep sea diver. Pardon me, commander. You say your name was Smith? Yes, sir. Hasn't we met somewhere? Hawaii, San Diego, or was it Norfolk? I'm afraid not, sir, unless it was down in Florida in the salvage business or in the South Seas. I guess I was mistaken. Good luck. Thank you. Well, sir? Oh, Jim's just a little bit worried, sir. He didn't know whether he'd get in or not. Mm, deep sea diver, eh? Yes, sir. Think he'd make a gunner's mate? Yes, sir. What'd I tell you, son? You're in the Navy. Did you ever play Nippanese poker? <laughs> Go ahead and ask me what's Nippanese poker. <laughs> this will kill you. You gotta have two jabs to open. <laughs> Thank you, boys. Thank you. So you're in again, huh? You said it. Hey, you don't look so good. I'm feeling all right. Now look, don't go pulling any more of those phony faints. Who, me? <laughs> As if I can't take it. Give me a blue plate special. Hello. Miss Mary, Mary Smith? Yes. Ha. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mary, and many of them. Thank you, fix it. Happy birthday. Fix it's my uncle. Oh, that's right. So he is. Yeah, hey, that's what you get for being an uncle. Uh, happy birthday, anyway. What is it? We'll open it and find out. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> so he did. Oh, Jim. 
It's beautiful. I'm glad you like it. it really, it's too nice. I shouldn't accept it. Do you know any other blue-eyed girl I could give it to? Just you try. <laughs> Hello, boys. Hi, Mom. Sounds like someone's knocking at the door. Oh, it must be Elliot. Elliot! Hello, Mary. Hello. Hi, you, Mom. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. I had a lot of important things to talk about with the Admiral. <laughs> like what? Hello, <laughs> fix it. I'm glad you made it for Mary's birthday. Wouldn't miss it. Hope you like the present, Mary. I'll know when you give it to me. Oh. I'm sorry. Here it is. Happy birthday. Thank you. Hey, you fellas ain't been introduced. This is Tennessee Smith. Jim, this is Elliot Nash. He's in mine disposal. Glad to know you. Hiya, fella. Elliot gave his fishing boats to the Navy to be converted into minesweepers. Better to catch big fish than little ones. Having trouble over there? Excuse me. Oh. Come on, Mom. We got something to do. It's lovely. I'm glad you like it. I love it. Just what I needed. <laughs> Happy birthday to Blue Eyes from Tennessee Smith. Blue Eyes, huh? Say, this smacks a sabotage. <laughs> he too, you lover. Show's on. Come and get it. <laughs> well, yes, I didn't know there was anything that funny in the Blue Jackets manual. Hmm. Sambo, his jokes and funny sayings. We need some humor in the Navy, Welsh. Say something funny. I'm sorry, sir. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Read me one of those jokes, and if it makes us laugh, we'll forget the whole thing. Anyone? Yeah, anyone. What's the best way to raise corned beef and cabbage? Go ahead, Mr. Bones. What's the best way to raise corned beef and cabbage? With a knife and fork. <laughs> now I'll tell you a good joke, Welch. Go to the blackboard and write, Corny Welch is as funny as a crutch. And write it 500 times. Yes, sir. Now go ahead, stick your knife and fork in that one. Rest of you men out the drill. make out with this class? Pretty good, sir. Five three sevens, four three eights, and one four zero, oh, sir. Who's the four zero? Oh? Smith, sir, number five. Mr. Tennessee Smith? Yes, sir. I never saw a rookie take to Navy routine like Smith does, sir. Just like an old-timer. He's going for gunners, mate, sir. I hope you make it, Smith. Thank you, sir. I'm going to try. That's the spirit. Most of you will be assigned to duty on minesweepers. You will find the work difficult, trying, and at times dangerous. The continual sweeping of the channels may appear dull and monotonous. A 
At times, you may wish that you were serving at sea in a more colorful and active branch of the Navy. But remember this. The lives of the ships and the men who go out through these harbors to battle our enemies depend on you. You are the men who keep them sailing. Good luck. Probably know where that came from, Mr. Wells. Undoubtedly. We'll get them. You know, for a rookie, you're a little short of terrific. That coming from you is a real compliment. Took me a year to get where you got in a month. <laughs> you're referring to the Navy or, uh... Both. Well, I'm not taking a back seat for anybody. You know, I'm sort of a handy lad myself. Sure, it's guys like you that make it tough for guys like me. around that waist of yours and you have to throw that bell away. My gosh, you're right. Between Mom's cooking and that Navy chow, they're about to play Ned with my streamlined fingers. Yeah, they sure are. Uh, Mom's having corned beef and cabbage tonight if you can't drop around. Yeah, I don't think so. I... Uh, by the way, Mary was asking about you. She was? Tell Mom I'll be on deck then. That's what I thought. Oh, you guys wouldn't know a good joke when you heard one. No, Mr. Corn, but we're learning. Learning very fast. Speaking of corn, that reminds me, Tennessee. Mom's having her favorite dish tonight. Corned beef and cabbage. <laughs> Did she raise it with a knife and a fork? Oh, <laughs> I'm sharp as a marble. Is that an announcement or an invitation? An invitation. How about it? I don't know, Fix it. I, uh... Uh, Mary is asking about you. Oh, she was? Sure. Then you tell Mom I'll be on deck tonight, then. I figured that. I already told her. Come on, I got to... The mooring line is fouled in our cutter. Swinging right and drifting back along our sweep line toward the mine. I had one third come left to your course. Aye, aye, sir. Drifting back on our course toward that little number would make a great show, wouldn't it? A one way ticket to Davy Jones. Here she is. Here! Notify the other ship to stand by and maintain strain on the cable. We'll lower boats and cut loose the mine. Send out a detail in boats to unfoul the gear. Aye, sir. Lower the boat. Check out a detail to unfile the gear.
those fellows doing? Looks as if Smith's removing a horn. All right, take it the rest of the way. Not this thing don't go off. I'm scared of fish. Hey, I got it. Hey, that does look different, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm gonna get that back to the skipper right away. Is that all you wanted? That's all. I'll cut her loose. Okay, easy. Sorry about those two men, Wells. Welch and Ryan, two good boys. We're going to miss them. Well, at least we have something to work on to prevent any larger tragedies as a result of these new Jap mines. What led you to believe this was a new design, Nash? It was Smith that recognized it, sir. Is that so, Smith? Yes, sir. More hunch than anything definite. The shape of the horn looks strong enough for safe handling aboard ship. I figured it would detonate more easily than the others on contact. You seem to have quite a knowledge of mines. I've been making a study of them, sir. I'm turning you over to Lieutenant Gilpin. You will both be transferred at once to his mine disposal unit with a recommendation that you be sent to mine school for further instructions. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I'm getting a higher rating, Mary. I know it, Elliot. I think it's swell. Well, what I was about to say was that uh, I don't see any reason to celebrate just for getting another stripe. I thought maybe you and I could figure out some really big reason for celebrating, like... Uh, Mr. Nash! Mr. Nash! I didn't know you were that bashful. I'd love to dance with you. Excuse us, please. You know, the morale of the armed forces is something that we're all interested in. anything to do with that. What? Angie. Angie? I never heard of her. 
I had to see you, Mary, to explain about not coming up to the house. Well, you probably had something more important. Isn't the harbor beautiful? So quiet and peaceful. Full of deceit. Deceit? Yeah, like a lot of things that seem all right on the surface. You're in a strange mood, Jim. Yeah. Guess I'm all mixed up. Thank you very much. <laughs> Until I popped out of nowhere, you were all set to marry Elliot, weren't you? I don't know, Jim. What are you trying to say? I know what I'd like to say. Do you suppose a person could change? That is, if, if they were different. Well, what Liz, I mean is... Jim, Liz, why didn't you tell me you wanted to dance with me? I could excuse us. After all, the morality are forces. <laughs> Boy, I sure did Chris Rosen, didn't I? Sure did. <laughs> but one variant of the Nazis' much-vaunted secret weapon which was supposed to bring England to her knees. But it didn't work. Because through the extraordinary heroism of Lieutenant Commander Overy of His Majesty Ship Vernon, the secret mechanism of this mine was discovered. The English Channel was opened again and England was able to receive her necessary war supplies. The blockade was broken. Now, any questions? Have the Japs laid any new type mines off our coast? Most of them are the ordinary contact type. As far as we know, they... Jogan speaking. Oh, yes, sir. I see. Yes, sir, I'll send the men at once. Nash, Smith, here's a real opportunity to get some practical diving experience. The tenders report a break in the nets in the outer harbor. You two will report to the diving launch at once to handle repairs. All right, sir. All right, sir.
Listening. Just had an accident. Mike fall in the net. He isn't getting any air. Just a minute. There aren't any bubbles. Get him untangled as fast as you can. Afraid I can. I'll have to cut him loose with a torch. Make it snappy. He's still got three or four minutes air left in that suit. Aye, aye. Clear, let me know. We'll pull him up fast and rush him to the recompression chamber. Right. money I put in here for safekeeping. That all, sir? That's all. Oh, Smith, you rate liberty at 1430, is that right? Till tomorrow. When you get back, you're going on minesweeper duty for a few days. They're short-handed up there, but report to me first. Dad, get what you got liberty, you want to borrow five bucks. You're wrong, Jim. I can't do it, Jim. Good night. You know what Captain said about cooperation? Yeah, but that don't mean I got to be loaning you money all the time. You got to cooperate. All right, will you do a favor when you go in town? Sure. Well, my girl and mama's coming in from Alabama tomorrow. Yeah? Okay. And I got the mission to meet them over here at the canteen. Oh. You won't tell nobody, will you? Well, I got a deposit up on a ring down at Sloan Jewelry Store. And you want me to pick it up? Yeah, so I can give it to Marjorie tomorrow. You let me have? The ten bucks. A deal. Okay, there's your 10. There's 20. There's 20. $75. I've been leaving a $5 steak margin of mommy out to dinner. Every time I think that much, I just get the goose pimples. <laughs> hey, Stubby. Yeah? No flowers for Margie? Gosh, I never even thought of that, Jim. Yeah, here. Here's $5. Get Margie one of them great big bunch of them red roses. <laughs> Hi, Jim. Hello, Elliot. Hi, Fixit. Hi. Seem to catch you decompressed. Yeah, thanks to you. Elliot's 4-0. 
You can say that again. Look, I don't mind the medals, Admiral, but don't kiss me on both cheeks. <laughs> got your liberty? Yeah, till tomorrow. I got 48 hours, and boy, I'm gonna equal way right through them. You fellas are coming up to the house, ain't you? I got a date with Mary. Have a good time, boys. I'm going down to San Diego to see my folks. Oh, I get it. Gonna make the coast clear for a better man, huh? Say, if I thought you were a better man, I wouldn't even go to San Diego. Tell Mary I'm seeing her tomorrow. I'm saving 20 out of my 40 hours leave just for her. Take care of yourself, Bob. <laughs> so long, Romeo. So long. Hey, Jim. I think he's getting ready to propose. What makes you think so? Well, the way he's talking about seeing his folks. I think he's gonna go down there and tell them about her, then come back up here and pop the $64 question. Oh, maybe you're right. Sure. I bet she comes back tomorrow with a ring. Now, listen, Jim. You want some advice? If you're serious about Mary, you better get in there first. I wish I was in a position to. Well, all you gotta do is ask her. Come on. Ah, oh, you go ahead and fix it. I gotta stop in town. What for? Oh, I got a couple of things to do. You're not gonna get in the game and lose your shirt like you did last week. Ah, oh, no, I'm off that stuff. That's what you said week before last. You sure you don't want a chaperone? I'll lay off when you fix it. Okay, okay. See you at dinner. There it is. W. Gordon, balance seventy-five dollars. That's the one. Wrap right. it up. I'll put it in a nice little box for you. How much is that one? This one here? Yeah. Oh, no, you got something there, sailor. Almost a carrot, blue white. Isn't that beautiful? Take a look at that. How much? Oh, wait a minute. Let me see. I can let you have that for four hundred and twenty-five. Holy smokes, that's a lot of dough for a sailor. Oh, you got a girl too, huh? Yeah. You want to buy her a ring. Yeah. Well, why don't you buy her one like Gordon? That's a nice ring too. No, no, this has got to be the real thing. Tell you what you do. Hold that for Gordon and put this one away for me. All right. Just ten bucks on deposit. Ten dollars? That's not much deposit for a ring like this. Oh, don't worry. I'll be back in a flash with the cash. Well, I hope you can get it. There's more than one way. Just hang on to that ring. The name is Smith. Smith. Not that far. Fine. We got two pair. No good. We can. I've had enough. Yep. So long, fellas. So long, boy. Can I cut in? Sure, sit down. Thanks. Table six. The eighty. Eighty now. I'm sorry, you have the wrong number. Oh, what on earth could have happened to him? Oh, maybe he met up with some of his old friends or something. Hey, Mom, how's it about putting on the chow? I'm so hungry I could eat an anchor chain. Let's wait a little longer. Missy, your call. Mom, if I could ever find a girl that could cook like you, I guess you know what I'd do. Yes, you need her out of house and home. Oh. Stop that. You're a big boy now. Yeah. Oh, I got the material for the curtains, darling. Not exactly what you want, but we can't get much in stores these days. Do you hear anything? I called the base. Nobody's seen him there either. And his liberty's up in a half hour. That's just what I was thinking. Something must have happened to him. Well, he's not going to be AOL, see? I'll go down and report for him. Yeah, but what do you tell them? He could be sick, you know. Yes, dear, he might be. Well, don't you worry, Mary. I'll fix it. Well, goodbye, Mom. And if Jim shows up, tell him not to get his stories mixed up. He's sick, see? But wait a minute, come on. You've got a whole day of your liberty left. You think you ought to do this? Mom, Jim's my pal. If I was in his spot, he'd do it for me, wouldn't he? Oh. 
Begging your pardon, sir, but I came to tell you about Jim Smith. Where is Smith? Sick, sir, at my house. Had a relapse in that beating he took yesterday. That's too bad. Running a fever. The doc said it might be dangerous for him to get up now. It might develop into, into something. I see. That leaves the minesweeper short of hand. No, sir. I rate Liberty, but I saw Lieutenant Wells, and he said it'd be all right for me to take over for Smith. Giving up your time for a buddy, huh? That's real Navy spirit. Thank you, sir. Uh, report to Lieutenant Wells, then. Aye, aye, sir. I just thought you'd like to know about Smith. Looks like we ain't gonna have no mine business today, Mr. Wells. Army planes reported a sub in these waters. They're not hanging around for fun. I'd sure like to get a shot at one of their mines, sir. as if we can report to Channel 3 of Mines for today. Yes, sir. Hi, Mom. Yeah, the roses are for you. Sort of an apology for not showing up last night. Hey, uh, where's Mary? You shouldn't have come here. Oh, Mom, you're not going to be sorry because I'm a day late, are you? You know that old adage, better late than never. Oh, hi, Mary. Oh, Jim. Now, before you say anything, you listen to me. I've been rehearsing this thing for the last hour, and if you interrupt me, I'm going to have to blow the whole thing. And you sit right down there. Have you been to the base? Well, um, I'll, I'll get there, all right. Look, I've been wanting to say this to you for a long time. I was afraid you might turn me down, but... Look, Mary, you're the only girl I ever really cared for, and... Well, holy mackerel, what I'm trying to say is... This is for you, will you? Will you wear? Oh, Jim. Then you don't know about fix it. Get his promotion? Fix is dead. Fix it? Mary, how? You were AOL. We didn't know what happened. We thought you might be sick. He was worried and reported for duty in your place. He took your watch on the minesweeper. It was a Jap mine. Fix it. And I had the nerve to come here and ask you to marry me. It should have been me, not him. It could have happened to anybody. No, not anybody. I killed him just as if I had laid that mine out there myself. Jim, I don't blame you. I'm not going to let this come between us. I know. Because you're clean, fine, and honest. Everything I'm not, everything I ever touched, I spoiled. I tell you, it was an accident. Accident? He knew where I was. He knew I wasn't sick. He knew I was gambling to get the dough to buy that ring so I'd make an impression on you. Oh, I'm not what you think I am, Mary. Everything about me is a lie. Jim, don't talk like that. Even my name's a lie. My name isn't Jim Smith. It's Richard Houston. I graduated from Annapolis. I got a commission, but that wasn't good enough. No, I had to be a big shot, and I had to have money. So I gambled, and I lost. I borrowed money from my fellow officers to pay back what I had lost. And when I couldn't pay my debt, I did the lowest thing a Navy officer could do. I deserted. I wandered around for a while trying to forget, but I couldn't. The Navy was in my blood. And when the war broke, I met to fix it. I thought I could pay my debt by joining up. And I met you, and I thought I could make a new life for myself. But now, this 
the same thing happened. And I lost my friend's life for him. Jim. Oh, forget about me, Mary. Dick Houston walked out years ago. Jim Smith never existed. There isn't a place for either one of them in decent society. Or in the Navy. $27.60. Attention, attention. All leave and shore liberty cancel for men attached to the San Pedro section. Return to the base at once. Emergency, huh? Attention, attention. All leave and shore liberty cancel for men attached to the San Pedro section. Hey, Return sailor, to the base you want this once. stuff or don't you? can't wait much longer. We've got to get the transport out in time to meet her convoy. But the channel has undoubtedly been mined. My men are needed for a vital action in the South Pacific. If we don't get out today, the convoy will have to proceed without us. So why can't we sweep the channel again? I doubt if it would do any good. What's your suggestion? We swept the channel and found no mines. If one of our ships was blown up. Evidently, the Japs have developed some new device. Mm -hmm. Where does that leave us? If we take the transport out, you'd probably be blown to kingdom come. We don't. We don't know yet. Hold the men in readiness. Reporting for duty, sir. A little late, aren't you? I know I should have been here yesterday, but... See, I was a little under the weather. I see. The minute I heard the alert over the radio, I reported immediately. Gilpin speaking. There must be mines on the floor of the channel. And of the unmoored type. We've got to locate one so we can find out what makes them tick. Floor of the channel, sir? It's like looking for a needle in a haystack. Well, then we've got to find that needle. How many divers have you got? Three divers, sir. Why, yes, sir, we have four attached, but one of them is a prisoner at large. Have them search the floor of the channel, starting a thousand feet beyond the harbor gate. There's a transport here that's got to be out in less than three hours. Understood, sir. I'll put the divers to work at once. Yes, sir. Ready both diving launches and prepare all men for diving. Aye, aye, sir. We're going to comb the floor of the channel and see if we can locate one of those mines. What about Smith? He's not available. Aye, aye, sir. Report to the chief master at arms. You're a prisoner at large. If you only knew the circumstances, sir, I... I wasn't exactly over leave. That was only one of the things I was referring to, Houston. No use saying anymore. That's all. Gilpin, don't you think I'd be a lot more used to the Navy if I were out there with the men instead of in the break? Oh, all right, Houston. Get to your diving launch, but report back to me as soon as the job's finished. All right, sir. They'll find them.
Yes, listening. We found one, sir. Good. What's it look like, Nash? It's circular with a flat bottom. Something like an inverted flower vase. It has numerous long horns on the globular body. Hold it, Nash. Plane overhead. Send me up. Jim Smith was Davy through and through. He certainly was. 